let's talk about the cardiac cycle the heart consists of three layers basically which is the endocardium the myocardium the muscular level and the pericardium the pericardium consists of fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium the serous pericardium contains the parietal layer and the visceral layer and the space between the parietal and visceral layer is the pericardial cavity which contains the pericardial fluid now this is but little bit orientation about the heart from anterior to posterior the uh, av walls are two that is the mitral wall and the tricuspid wall the tricuspid wall contains three cusps as you can see mitral wall is a bicuspid wall the there are again there are semilunar walls which is the aortic wall and the pulmonary wall now if you see the pulmon if you see the orientation the orient the pulmonary wall is anterior most behind that there is aortic wall followed by laterally posteriorly there is bicuspid and the tricuspid walls i hope this image is clear now coming to the blood supply of the heart uh, the it is supplied by the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery derives from the aorta so this is the right coronary artery right coronary artery basically gives uh, two branches that is the sa nodal artery and right coronary artery then which again gives the right marginal i'll just mark it with some other colors so that it's easier to understand yeah so this is the rca it gives uh, sa nodal artery and the coronary artery this is the right marginal artery then which goes posteriorly and it will give posterior descending artery so the artery which gives the posterior descending artery is the give is the dominant artery which is mostly given by rca in majority of the subjects but it can also come from circumflex artery in which you can say the left coronary artery is the dominant artery the artery which gives the posterior descending artery is the dominant artery now coming to the left coronary artery left coronary artery will give you left circumflex and left anterior descending which supplies majority of the left ventricle of the heart left circumflex will turn uh, will go around posteriorly and anastomose with the right coronary artery i hope that the coronary circulation is clear coming to the conduction system of the heart consists of sa node av node conducted connected by three bundles then is the bundle of his which then divided to purkinje fibers which ultimately supply the ventricles so this is the conduction of the heart the impulse is generated in the sa node now coming to the definition of the cardiac cycle the cardiac events that occur from the beginning of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next heartbeat is called as cardiac cycle normal duration of cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds when the heart rate is 75 beats per minute the ventricular systole consists of 0.3 seconds ventricular diastole consists of 0.5 seconds atrial systole is 0.1 seconds atrial diastole is 0.7 seconds so each cardiac cycle will have two phases that is the systole that is the systole and the diastole so the systole is time during which the muscle is contracting diastole is time during which the muscle is relaxing atria and ventricles do not contract and relax at the same time the diastole and systole occur at different times very important now coming to the events in the cardiac cycle it is atrial systole ventricular isovolumetric contraction stage of rapid ejection stage of slow ejection isovolumetric relaxation rapid ventricular filling and stroke ventricular filling again i'll repeat it is atrial systole ventricular isovolumetric contraction rapid ejection slow ejection isovolumetric relaxation rapid ventricular filling and slow ventricular filling prior to atrial systole blood has been 
flowing passively from atrium to the ventricle through the open atrioventricular wall. During atrial systole, the atrium contracts and tops up the volume in the ventricle. Only a small amount of blood, which is 20%, atrial contraction is complete before the ventricle begins to contract. Isovolumetric contraction. The AV wall closes at the beginning of the phase. So isovolumetric means the volume remains the same and the, so then the ventricle starts contracting. So in this situation, the AV wall have already closed to the beginning of this phase. Mechanical isovolumic phase of ventricular system is defined as the interval between closing of the AV walls and the opening of the semilunar walls. So contraction is happening when the semilunar walls are not open. But the atrial, sorry, the AV walls have closed. So the volume in the ventricles remain the same. That's why it is isovolumetric contraction. So if you understand the concept, you can be able to remember this. Both AV and the semilunar walls are closed. Ventricle is a closed chamber. Pressure rises rapidly and no change in volume. Ventricle pressure exceeds the atrial pressure. As AV wall closes, first heart sound is produced. As ventricular muscle contraction continues, continues and pressure rises steeply, AV, AV wall bulges into the atrium. Now coming, now coming to the stage of rapid ejection, the semilunar aortic walls and pulmonary walls open at the beginning of this phase of the ventricular system. Ventricular systole proper, left ventricular pressure exceeds the aortic pressure, ATM MMG. Right ventricular pressure exceeds the pulmonary artery pressure, which is around 10 to 12 mm of HA. Semilunar valve opens and arterial and ventricular pressure equals. So, the left LV pressure will exceed the aortic pressure, and RV pressure will exceed the pulmonary artery pressure. So, the blood is ejected from the LV into the aorta and RV into the pulmonary artery. And once the semilunar valve, valve opens, the pressure equalizes in the artery and the ventricles. So, there are three subdivisions of ventricular systole proper. Initially, rapid ejection phase, which lasts for 0.1 seconds. Interventricular pressure rises maximum. Left ventricle is 120 mmHg and right ventricle is 25 mmHg. Two thirds of stroke volume is ejected. Arterial pressure rises as blood enters the arteries fast. As semilunar walls open, AV walls close. The second phase, summit of ventricular pressure is reached. Aortic and pulmonary artery pressure exceeds the ventricular pressure. Final and slow ejection phase, ventricular contraction subside. Ventricular pressure declines. Slow ejection of blood from ventricles into the arteries and fly flow from artery to peripheral branches. Stage of rapid ventricular filling. Once the systole is over, the accumulated blood from atria flows into the ventricle, marking the beginning of ventricular diastole. Once the AV wall opens, blood that is accumulated in the atria flows rapidly into the ventricles. Now coming to the ventricular diastole, the ventricle starts relaxing. So protodiastole is 0 0.04 seconds. Now, there, uh, there was isovolumetric contraction. Now, there is isovolumetric relaxation, which is 0 0.08 seconds. Ventricular diastole proper is 0.28 seconds. In last rapid filling phase to ventricular systole is 0.1 seconds. So, all these durations, you need to remember, they are important MCQs. Protodiastole, ventricular systole ends. There is a beginning in the drop of ventricular pressure. Arterial pressure is sustained by the elastic recoil of the muscle wall. Arterial pressure exceeds the ventricular pressure. Closure of semilunar wall, second heart sound is produced. Isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. Start with closure of semilunar wall. Heavy wall already closed. Intraventricular pressure drops. Relaxation of the ventricular muscle. No change in volume. Ends with ventricular fall. pressure falls below the arterial pressure. Opening of the AV wall. Ventricular diastole proper, 70% ventricular filling occurs. A rapid filling of the ventricle, opening of the AV walls, that is 0.1 to 0.12 seconds. Continued relaxation of the ventricles. Atrial pressure falls to almost same as ventricular pressure. Slow filling phase. 
that is around 0.18 to 0.20 seconds continuous venous return of atrial and ventricle and diastolic and diastolic volume is readjusted last rapid filling space due to atrial systole an additional thrust is given to the inflow of blood to the ventricles this amounts to 20% of the filling ventricle now coming to the atrial diastole atrial muscle relax atrial pressure gradually increases due to continuous venous return followed by a drop to zero mm hg due to opening of the atrioventricular wall 